Composite indexes. It might sound a little bit weird when you say it like that, but how can I say? Have you ever heard of Gender Equality Index or uh, Press Freedom Index? Yes, that's exactly what I am talking about. But there is something strange about these indexes. That is, all developed countries are in the top 20 in these indexes. It is weird enough, huh? So, what is the reason of that? Have you ever wondered? So, we wondered about this issue and investigated in detail. What are composite indexes and what do they stand for? Does it really contribute to humanity? Or is it a tool for countries to meddle in each other's domestic affairs? Here in this video, we will assess composite indexes. Now, if you have any, slowly put aside all your prejudices and misinformation and discover the truth with me. How are these indexes developed? Each index consists of multiple indicators. Indicators which is related to the topic. Then, the values of these indicators are determined. In order to collect the value of each indicator, the indicator values are converted into a sub-index because the unit is different for all of them. It is necessary to convert to a single common unit. Here, in our case, the index value is taken as the common unit. Think like that. How do you sum 5 apples and 3 pears together? You convert the unit value of both the kilograms. Then, you may answer that 5 apples equal to 1 kilo and 3 pears to a half. In total, it is 1.5 kilograms, In it? Then, all values are summed by taking the geometric mean. Ta -ta -ta -tam. And here is the composite index, is ready. Now, you can rank countries, economic, cultural, sociological. In a title, you can prepare a composite index, unless indicators should depend on a reliable statistical data. Indexes are usually prepared by international organizations established by developed countries. As a matter of fact, Western countries are mostly in the top 10. What's up? Do you think it is a coincidence? <laughs> you need to see the big picture, buddy. Because they are the ones who already developed these indexes. Isn't it a tough claim? Yes, I know, it is. But let's prove by giving an example. You can find many indexes that measure well-being, wealth, household income, or standard of living. But for some reason, you will not find an index of racism or Islamophobia. Because the advanced states have a very bad track record in such matters. We said earlier that indexes consist of multiple indicators and parameters. Are the indicators in these indexes false? Never. All accurate and verified from credible data sources. But the problem is not whether the data in these indicators are correct or not. Here is the problem. Not including other relevant indicators in the index. Let's simplify things a bit and have a look at the Human Development Index to understand. What are the indicators of human development? per capita income, average life expectancy, and literacy level. Only three indicators? Well, it is. What about colonialism, hate crimes, or racism? There is a lot of statistical data in these areas as well. Or are these indicators not important enough to be included in the Human Development Index? Is that what you mean by human development? In other words, if people have money in a society, can read and write and live long, does this make them superior in terms of human development? I don't think so. And I'm 100% sure that you don't. Look, we can understand this situation very well in the letter written by a Jewish high school principal to the teachers working at the school at the beginning of each academic year. Dear teacher, I am a survivor of a concentration camp. My eyes saw what no man should witness. Guest chambers built by learned engineers, children poisoned by educated physicians, infants killed by trained nurses, women and babies shot and burned by high school and college graduates. So, I am suspicious of education. My request is 
help your students become human. Your efforts must never produce learned monsters, skilled psychopaths. Reading, writing, arithmetic are important only if they serve to make all children more human. Anyway, let's back to our topic. What did we say? Why are there just only three parameters in the Human Development Index? We asked why colonialism, hate crimes or racism are not added. Proof is coming! If other related indicators are added to these three parameters, the ranking turns upside down. The country which ranks first becomes the 115th or vice versa. For example, have you ever heard of an index on Islamophobia? You haven't. Why? Because there is no such an index. However, every year in many European countries, places of worship are burned down. There are people killed because they are Muslims. Islamic associations and foundations face pressure or are closed down. In Europe, in the 21st century, there are those who cannot get promoted in public institutions and lose their jobs just because they are Muslims. Well, have you ever heard of an index called charity? Of course you didn't hear, because there is no such an index too. However, there are enough homeless people in these developed countries to compete with the poorest country in the world. This index job is dangerous, buddy. We have seen in the recent years that it can be used as a tool to meddle in the internal affairs of some countries. For example, when a country ranks low in an index, domestic policy is directly affected. We are witnessing a lot in our own country, right? In Turkey. When an index is published and Turkey has a bad ranking, opposition party deputies immediately take it and use it against government. Or, when Turkey is ranked well in an index, the ruling party deputy is presented as Look how well we serve you. In short, a bad ranking in index puts pressure on the government and strengthens the opposition party. Or vice versa. This is a situation which has very serious consequences. Because the end of the story may go up to the queue, which means the index developer indirectly meddle into internal affairs of that country. There are many cases that can be cited as example of this. Let's go through an example. There is an index called the freedom of the press. Basically, it describes how freely can writers and journalists express themselves in a country. Actually, that's what it's supposed to tell us about. Why I choose the word of supposedly? Let me explain. Turkey ranks 153rd in this index. Okay, well, what does that mean now? 142 countries above Turkey have a more free environment for journalists. Let's see if it is so. Mexico, the country ranked 143rd. I saw it on the news last week. Son of a mafia killed the police with a machine gun just because of his father is in jail. Well, okay, let's look at the better ranked countries. Colombia, it's ranked 134th. Come on, man, come on. Colombian citizens are trying to escape from their country by surgically implanting one kilo of cocaine in their stomach. Well, let's look at little better ranked countries. Burkina Faso, 37th. There are thousands of terrorist organizations in that country. Every week they blow up a ministry building. You mean Burkina Faso ranks 37th, right? Come on! Indexes are really important for diagnosing the main barriers to social and economic development. However, their methodologies and indicators need to be revised or updated. I'm not saying that a high life expectancy is not an indicator of development or high per capita income either. 
I mean, there are many other statistical parameters that measure human development too. Come on, include them too, please. Let's deal with other racial and scientific methods and receive the results that make us to make healthier decisions. Then the indexes enlighten our way. Because index is supposed to be report cards where countries can see their individual shortcomings. Thus, measures can be taken against negative economic or sociological threats. Otherwise, indexes will remain just as tools for meddling in each other's domestic affairs.